I've been mentioning for a while how I've been collecting parts for a kitchen under cabinet lighting project and today's the day. So here's the old lights which are halogens. Uh, they get crazy hot under there as halogens do. Uh, and this one keeps coming out of its out of its uh, mount when somebody's stacking stuff in the dishes up in the cupboard up above. The switch is kind of going intermittent and they just draw a ton of power and create a bunch of heat. So time for an upgrade. So in order to do this project we will of course need some LEDs. My wife has already chosen warm white from the assortment that I've shown her. We'll need some power. So I'll grab uh, what do we got in here? 12 volts, 2 amps, that'll do. And then we'll need a switch to turn them on and off. Uh, that one and some connectors and a box to put it in and I think that's everything we're gonna need so let's uh, let's get at her there's not that much electronics to do in this one it's mostly mechanical there's a little bit of soldering but uh, I'll just flow through this I'm gonna put the switch in the lid of these of this box I'll just find the middle just by pointing the diagonals. To score it, I'm just using the back of the knife just because it makes a nice spot. I'll drill that out. Then on here, I'm going to need power coming in from the adapter, which is this guy, and power going out, which I'm going to use these little removable screw terminal plugs. They're easier when they're not attached. These are designed for going on to a circuit board, but I'm not going to bother using one. And of course I only need two circuits, so I'm just going to use two of these three and leave the third one for nothing in particular. So I'm going to need to draw out roughly where these go. And that one needs to be high enough up that it doesn't catch on the bottom. Mark it out approximately. These are going to be hidden under the cupboard, so if it's not beautiful, it's not a big hairy deal. And then mark starting point there. And uh, yeah, what else? Oh yeah, so this these lids uh, don't screw on; they're just a snap fit. But they're going to be uh, being used for. Well, hopefully at least 20 years as long as those halogens were. So I am going to screw the the lid on, which means I have to identify where that is. Let's see, if I find a nice convenient mark. Looks like it's about four millimeters from there. So I'll just make some drilling marks on here as well. in from each corner and repeat that all the way around all right a little bit of cleanup of burrs and stuff around the holes. That switch fits through there nicely. That's that. That fits in there. Now I just have to open that hole up. You can't see that. Just have to open up that hole and turn it into a rectangle. So, chop out the excess from the middle and then start applying some files to it which is going to be slightly time consuming.
clean up the rough bits on the edge a little bit and on the middle and the inside. You. Oh yeah. That made a mess of my pristine work surface. That's okay. Clean it up pretty quickly. Hey, here's a thing. Um, there's a little crud built up in there. Normally, in the real world, you'd use what thing called a file card. I'm just using a little brass wire brush that knocks most of this crud out. It's not getting any metal filings in there. I'd need a more stiff brush, but this is handy and it does the job. All right, now we can start mounting stuff. Start with the switch just because it's easy. Oh, actually, I want to flip that one around. That little tab is for locking into a hole if you want to put a hole in there to keep it from spinning. I don't care that much. And I don't think I need the extra washer on the back as a spacer. I'll just lock it down here. Now then you notice the scratches are visible on there from when I, when I was marking it. I'm not entirely concerned. This is going to be underneath the cabinet where nobody is going to see it unless you're literally lying down on the counter. And if you're in that condition, I'm going to assume you're too drunk to care. Okay, that's that. Um, now this guy doesn't really have an orientation. I'm going to put it that way to make it easier to solder the wires on. But it really doesn't matter electrically. It's just for my convenience. This would be better if I had a wrench or something handy, but I'm too lazy to walk the 10 feet and go get one. Okay. Soldering time. I'm going to use some of this wire, mostly because I have it. Um, take a piece about that long. This wire is the three wire stuff that I bought to use with servos and sensors and things. But it's just convenient and handy as a source of uh, stranded wire. While I'm stripping that down, let's get this guy warming up and get a little bit of water on there. Again, you could use a wire stripper. I've got an assortment of them around, but that's just as convenient. You just have to hold it tight at the right spacing so you don't nick the uh, conductors off. Now then, which is center? Which is positive? Um, I think... Center positive is normal on these things. I guess I should, oh yeah, there it says right there. Can you see that? There you go, center positive. Okay, so, which one is, I think the shorter one that goes to the center, but I want to check because so this is actually on the outside. Yeah, that's so that's the negative. And there's the center pin positive. Okay, so the short one is the positive. Just by convention, I'm going to make that the red wire because it makes me happy. Yeah. Probably could tin that to make it go through easier. In fact, that's what I shall do. Solder, solder. Okay. 
Yeah, that's not a lot, but it's enough. And then now that it's tinned, I can put a little bend in it. So it's easier to play with. Get in. I'm going to turn that bend into an actual hook. So that it holds when I put it through there. I'm going to do the negative first because it seems to be easier. I'll zoom down on this a little bit here. I mean, it's just soldering. It's nothing that exciting to see, but... I was wondering if I'd need to put a heavier tip on for heating up these lugs. It seems to have flowed nicely, so I don't have to worry about it. Ah, it moved. There. No, that's not hot on the tip on the fingertips at all. Okay, so split this guy apart. The ground can go straight to there. Uh, which way am I going to put this? I'm going to put it that way up. And I think I will make the positive this side here. So I'll go ahead and strip that guy and give him a bit of a tin again. I keep going out of shot. Sorry about that. Bend and just crimp him onto there to hold him mechanically until I can throw some heat at it. Okay, it moved. When it moves while it's cooling, that'll create a cold solder joint every single time. Now then, how long does that have to be? Just about that long. I could stay with the full length of the wire, but that's unnecessary. Tin this. The reason why I keep sneaking back this way is because it's just easier for my old eyes to see when it's over there. Unfortunately, that's not the center of where the camera is looking. While I am mostly doing this project for my wife, I am also doing it for you guys somewhat too. Okay, fine, be like that. I'll tin, tin the pin. that onto there. There we go. Now then, that's going to go through like that. And snip that in the middle and solder the switch on. And this one it's actually double pull, sing, single throw double pull. So if I use the center pin in one of the two ends, then one direction is going to be off, one direction is going to be on. And it's not crucial to my application because it's not labeled. I can flip the switch or flip the lid around uh, if I decide that I want it to go the other direction. These short bits of solder always get knotted up.
That didn't work very well. Get in there, you. There. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Now then, I just have to mount that in there. And for that, I'm going to mount, I'm going to use a whole bunch of hot melt glue from the back side here. Okay, while that hot snot is taking its own sweet time to cool off, I'm going to do a couple of other things. Going to do a little bit of labeling just so that I don't lose my mind later. Do, 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 do. That goes in like that. That on that side. Da. Green for ground. Red for hot. Yes, I, I know negative. It's not really grounded. Whatever. Go with it here. And then I'll do the same thing on there. And this is a keyed thing. It can only go in one. Oh, that's hot. It can only go in one way up. But still, at a glance, there it is. I know what I'm doing. I guess the first thing I need to do up here is get the old ones out. These are just powered off an AC transformer, 12 volts AC, 2.9 amps. Wow, 35 VA, 45 watts. No wonder they got hot. Now that that's out of there, and I'm not likely to need these again. And I can just yank on here a little bit. So now for reinstallation, that's where. These little silicone clippy things are going to come in handy, I think. As I don't always trust that adhesive. I mean, use the adhesive, obviously. It's there. But I'll back it up with a few of those. And any wires that I have to tie down, I'll just use some of those. There's not going to be many of them. but Okay, so underneath here, I'm just going to tuck that up close to the front so that nobody gets glared in their eyes. But there are these little pieces here and I think I'm just going to wrap that around as tight as I can I can and then carry on so I can just have one continuous strip that's the plan anyway we'll see how it goes help I hope okay I've screwed one of these little saddles in up there but you can't see it yeah, the alcohol should have evaporated by now so tuck that in under that and now are you going to stick oh, so far it's sticking that's a good sign This is going to be awkward. Okay, I've got the strip mounted most of the way around. Why is that so out of focus? It's a little awkward going around the corners. I just got the last strap to go at the end here. I'll just measure that out. 
and of course the closest cut point is back there so I'll go to the next one which is there and trim to length and then install that the other thing that I'm doing just from a belt plus suspenders point of view is I'm getting a little bit of hot glue onto those saddles so hopefully it will hold and not drop down into my waist baking which of course becomes my problem Okay, now that the hot melt is hardened up on this guy, time to install him, which is going to be right about there, which is very close to where the old switch was. But since the strip is close to the front, I'm going to move it back just a little bit. Snap the lid in and screw them down. And the last step is to find a place to solder on the power wires onto the LED strip. And that looks like a good place right there. Since I didn't want to bring my entire shop up here, I figured I'd use the uh, USB soldering iron. Let's plug into a power bank, let him warm up. It's a dampened paper towel. I think here instead of a sponge, I'll quickly strip this back. And just for those of you who are going to tell me to get a, a wire stripper instead of using my cutters, I've got one. Positive is that one. Yay, USB soldering iron. Okay, now we'll plug that guy in. Plug the power pack into there. Get into the wall. I'll try to do that cable up later and very nice nice even illumination I don't have the three hot spots that uh, there were with the halogens and they're not just hot anyway because they're nice cool LEDs cool white specifically there we go I think that's a well done project, or at least by my standards anyway, and uh, I guess we'll see if it meets with approval. Thanks for watching, um, if you have anything to say, comments down below, I will talk to you later.